This video is how my TV antenna works. A few months back, I did a video on the transmitting side of a TV station. This is the receive side. First of all, before we start talking about antennas, we need to get a little bit of information. Best place for that is antennaweb.org. Type in your zip code and you'll get an entire list of the TV stations available in your area. And by looking at the listings, all of them seem to be in the same direction. I go down a little bit farther and the map confirms that. The color code indicates how strong the station actually is. In my case, all the stations are coming out of Green Bay, but that is not where I have to point the antenna. The place that all the antennas are located is just south of Green Bay, in an area called Scrays Hill. So a little bit of information first about antennas. Television stations are either VHF or UHF, very high frequency or ultra high frequency which is a signal that is straight line of sight. Okay, you might say, well, that's great. If I can see the tower, I'm in business. Well, yeah, that's pretty true. But due to the curvature of the Earth, that distance depends a lot on how high you are. For instance, if the broadcaster's tower is at 1,000 feet, I can expect a range of about 44.7 miles before things really start to get dicey. But if the broadcaster has an antenna at 1,500 feet, I can expect a pretty good signal at 54.7 miles away. So as you can see, height has a lot to do with it. One other thing that's going on right now is the FCC repack. If you don't know what the FCC repack is, basically it's the federal communication is changing a lot of channels throughout the United States. And if you notice in my area, the two little repacks with the eyes on them, if you click on those, it'll actually tell you that in my case, the Fox affiliate will not be repacked until 5 of 2020. So let's get some information about the stations. If we go to the FCC database, we can find out the current status of a given TV station. In the case of my local ABC affiliate, they've already completed the repack and are currently licensed for digital channel 23, even though on the TV set it'll show up as channel 2. The next station I looked at was WFRV. Like most stations I found in the repack, they didn't quite meet the deadline. So they're under what's called a construction permit. If you take a look at their power output, they'll be sitting at a million watts, but they're not quite there yet. It's also the same with channel 26. They needed to get a modification to their construction permit. And when all is said and done, they'll be at 500,000 watts. And in the case of channel 11, which is the local Fox affiliate, they haven't even started the repack as we've learned earlier. We show them currently licensed at VHF channel 11, but if we take a look at the second record, that shows that they do have a construction permit for a repack to channel 12. The repack isn't due until May of 2020. As a television viewer, the big thing that we have to remember if we're receiving over the air antenna is every once in a while, you'll need to rescan your channels. When I look at the local channels in my area, it's very obvious which ones are in the middle of the repack. When your local television station tells you to rescan your local channels, that's an indication that some of the channels are changing. In theory, the repack is supposed to be complete by July 3rd, 2020. From what I'm seeing around the United States, it's definitely behind schedule. So now let's get into the antennas. Every antenna has its purpose, and one size doesn't fit all. You'll see antennas similar to this one, all kinds of different manufacturers, make this particular type of antenna. They're meant to be stuck on a window. And if you read the instructions, it says, stick them up on a window, high. Again, we get back to the idea of height as being one of the most important factors with television antennas. The other thing to keep in mind is how an antenna is rated. For instance, I see this antenna rated for X number of miles. Well, I'm X number of miles away, so that'll work for me. Nope, that ain't how it's rated. This type of antenna is what's known as a dipole. If you took the skin apart on this antenna, this is what you would see. Two wires connected to a coaxial cable. This here is a chart of how that antenna works. You're in the center at the red dot, and the antenna is looking at a signal facing the flat spot in one direction and this flat spot in the other direction. In other words, X number of miles in one direction, X number of miles in the other direction, add those together, and that gives us a range. The other antenna that's real common is an antenna that looks like this. 
There are several varieties of this antenna. Some range as far as 60 and 70 miles. It too is a dipole antenna. So, needless to say, when we're measuring distance on this antenna, we take the two endpoints. And quite frankly, this type of antenna works in most environments. You just have to understand its capabilities. Some manufacturers actually refer to these antennas as multi-directional antennas. But for the most part, they're dipoles. The other type of antenna is a directional antenna, commonly referred to as a Yagi antenna. This is a rough breakdown at how that antenna actually works. The driven element is the only element that's actually connected. The directors are bringing in the signal, and the reflector is sending the signal back to the director. The big advantage to this is everything goes in one direction. You're the center spot in the middle, and the distance is measured between the two arrows. The disadvantage of this antenna, it is very directional. While a swing on the dipole is pretty close to 360 degrees, the swing on this is only about 55 degrees. In other words, you have to be pointed right at the station. These antennas typically have a very long range. However, it's only in one direction. This type of antenna is great in what's known as a fringe area. And that's the difference between antennas. Now I'll be the first one to say that I do not like to quote ranges on antennas. There's way too many variables. I prefer such terms as multi-directional, directional, or city use, or rural use. As we've learned in this video, there's way too many variables to give any kind of range of a receiving TV antenna. And if you want to know, the type of a TV antenna that I have at my location is a directional antenna. However, I am 35 miles from the tower locations, and since they're all relatively close to each other, that was the best antenna for me. I hope this video has been helpful, and if you like this video, please subscribe.